Hi there. Now for this question, we're given the area of triangle PQT is 20 centimetres squares. And we've got to find the angle QTS. So if you'd like to have a go at this question, I'll just give you a moment to pause the video. When you come back, you might want to fast forward to check your answer, or I'll take you slowly through the method. Okay, welcome back then if you had a go. Now, first of all, I'm going to consider that working from triangle PQT. I need to get the length QP. And to do that, I'm going to work off the formula for the area of a triangle. So uh, let's just put down here uh, some kind of intro or subtitle. I'm just going to say we're going to consider triangle PQT. And if that's the case, working out the area of a triangle, when you know two sides and an included angle, you can use the formula, what we call half AB sine C. You should be familiar with that one. It's half the product of two sides that enclose the angle. So it's going to be QP as one of the sides. And then I know this side, 7. And then that is multiplied by the sine of the included angle, which is 50 degrees. And this gives us the area of the triangle, which we now know is 20 from up here. So rearranging this for QP, we therefore have QP equals 2 times 20, so in other words 40, and that's all divided by 7 sine 50 degrees. So we've got that. Make sure your calculator is in degrees mode, and assuming it is, you should find you get QP to be 7.4594 and so on, okay, centimetres. I won't round this up, otherwise we'll get a rounding error towards the end. So now that I've got QP, I can get this length QT. And I can get that by still working off the triangle PQT, but using the cosine rule. So let's just put down here by the cosine rule. I'll just abbreviate it to the cos rule. Then we're going to have QT squared. Okay, this side squared is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. So that's going to be QP squared, which is this length here. So 7.4594 and so on. That's squared plus the other side squared, PT squared, which is 7 squared. And then it's minus twice the product of these two sides. So it's 2 times the 7.4594 and so on. Multiply by the 7 and times the cosine of 50 degrees. So if you're unsure of the cosine rule, do check out my earlier videos on this. Now if you work this out, again make sure your calculator is still in degrees mode, then you should find that you get 37.5157 and so on. And to get QT, just need to take the square root of that. So therefore QT equals the square root of this. And if you do that, you should find you get 6.1250 and so on. And that's going to be measured in centimetres. Now that I've got the length QT, I'm in a position now, knowing three sides of this triangle, to start to work out the angle QTR, this one in here. I'll call it, say, alpha. So I'm gradually working my way to the angle QTS, which we require. So knowing three sides of a triangle, and you want to find your angle here, we need to use the cosine rule again. But first of all, I'll just say that we're going to consider the triangle QTR, okay, QTR. And using the cosine rule to get an angle, 
Remember, it starts off the cosine of your angle, cosine alpha in this case, equals the sum of the squares that surround the angle here. So that's going to be QT squared plus RT squared. Well, QT was this length here, so it's going to be 6.1250 and so on squared plus the 5 squared. And then we subtract the opposite side squared to the angle here. So that's going to be minus 8 squared. And all of this is divided by twice the product of our two sides that surround the angle. So that's going to be 2 times the 6.1250 and so on times the 5. And if you work this out, you'll find it comes to a negative value, minus 0 0.1. 0.242 and so on. And to get alpha we just take the inverse cosine of that. So if you do that you should find that the angle alpha turns out to be 91.388 and so on. And that's measured in degrees. The next I want to think about getting the angle RTS from the triangle RTS. But at the moment, knowing just opposites here, the 5 centimetres and the 80 degrees, I can find this angle over here by using the sine rule. Let me call this angle here, say, theta. So by the sine rule, let's just say consider, first of all, though, triangle RTS. And by the sine rule, then, we're going to have the sine of angle theta over 4, sine of angle theta divided by 4, is going to equal sine of 80 degrees over its opposite side, which is 5 centimetres. Now, I can rearrange this for sine theta just times both sides by 4. So we therefore have sine theta equals 4 times sine 80 degrees and that's divided by the 5. Now if you work that out, okay, you should find that therefore sine theta is equal to 0.7 eight seven eight and so on and so to get theta we just take the inverse sine of both sides and theta turns out to be 51.984 and so on degrees so that allows us now to work out angle rts the third angle in this triangle so therefore we've got the angle rts just put a circumflex over the top there well, that's going to be 180 degrees minus the sum of the 80 degrees plus theta, which we've just seen is 51.984 and so on degrees. And if you work that out, what you end up with is 48.016 and so on degrees. So we've got angle RTS now. So we're nearly there. To get angle QTS, I've just got to add this angle to alpha. So therefore, we've got angle QTS is going to equal 91 then 0.388 and so on. That was angle alpha. We add that to 48.016 and so on degrees. And what we end up with is 139.4 degrees if we round it, say, to one decimal place. So I hope you're able to get that. If so, well done. Quite a long question with a lot of steps in. If not, at least I hope that you've been able to see how we go about it. Okay?